Hey everyone, it is Kylie here. I wanted to pop on today and, um, you know, just talk a little bit about my experience. I've been doing a lot of sort of um, business trainings and rethinking and rejigging and rebranding. And one of the things that um, has come up is that I don't actually share my story consistently enough. So I wanted to share a little bit more about my mothering story and my motherhood kind of journey story. And really, this was the catalyst to why I decided that I wanted to really focus my work and my business on helping mamas and babies and really helping mamas to reduce the overwhelm of motherhood, to get more sleep, and just to feel more confident in their baby's development. Um, and since then, I have taken lots of different kinds of trainings and certifications to really help uh, reduce that overwhelm in a way that is, you know, teaching and educating on what is developmentally appropriate for different ages and stages for your babies, um, but also in an attachment and kind of responsive parenting kind of way. Um, so going back to what my kind of journey has been, so I gave birth to my firstborn, um, and we can talk about my journey into getting pregnant another time, because that's a whole other story. But I gave birth to my firstborn just over five years ago in New York City. Um, that whole birth experience was a whole other story as well. That was uh, not very supportive birth experience. So there was definitely some birth trauma that I had to deal with afterwards, which I didn't realize at the time. Um, so that probably had a little bit to do with my general overwhelm in those newborn days and weeks and months. And so I was living in Brooklyn and we loved our apartment and we loved our neighborhood. We were in Park Slope in Brooklyn and I found myself with a newborn. I had, at the time, I had 10 years of experience as a pediatric occupational therapist, so I knew a lot of things about infant and child development. And I literally found myself with a newborn having no clue what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, I knew how to keep the basics and how to keep him alive and all of that stuff, but between figuring out how to breastfeed and the nipple pain and the chafed <laughs> nipples and the bleeding nipples and recovering from a C-section and having a baby who did not sleep, um, not that he didn't sleep, but he would only sleep on me or if I was moving. And there was none of this like sleeping peacefully in the stroller or having naps in his bassinet or anything like that. And at the time, I thought that there was something wrong with my baby because I literally was like, oh, all these other parents and babies are sleeping in their strollers and parents are going out for walks and they're getting together for coffee and their babies just sleep peacefully in the stroller and my baby was not that baby. Um, little did I know that actually wanting to sleep on mom and while moving is 100% normal for babies, but I didn't know that at the time. So I was really stressed out. So I just remember, um, you know, I was, I knew some things. So, you know, with my background in pediatric occupational therapy, I did know some things like I was singing to him and I was chatting with him and we were doing tummy time, although he hated tummy time also. Um, so that was a little bit stressful. Um, and, you know, I was doing all of those things, baby massage and, you know, all those fun things. Um, but I was exhausted. I was exhausted. I was stressed. I really did enjoy going to mom and baby classes um, because it was a way for me to get out of the house and be social. But I was exhausted and I was confused and I was stressed out and I just felt like there was way too much on my plate and I couldn't think. Um, and so that was like my first few months of motherhood and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Um, Hi, Kanika. Kanika, I like that name. Um, anyway, so I'm sure a lot of you mamas can relate to that overwhelm and that stress and that feeling of like, I have no clue what's going on. But then sometimes being like, no, no, I got this. It's all good. <laughs> so it's kind of like a ping pong back and forth with the, like, what the heck am I doing? 
And sometimes you get that little nugget of like, all right, uh, I got that. Like I finally got my baby to sleep or I finally did the transfer or whatever, right? Um, anyway, so this is really what spurred me because when we moved to Toronto, I decided that I was not going to find a full-time job. I had a six-month-old baby and um, that I was going to start trying to build my business while I had my baby on my hip, so to speak, um, so that I could have a bit more flexibility in terms of timing and raising my children. And so my passion for mom and babies really started with all of that overwhelm, all of that stress, all of that like not knowing what the heck I was doing because I thought to myself, all right, I have the training and the experience in infant development, in child development. I have the training of working with children and with parents. I know this stuff, but why could I not put it into practice? And if I knew that stuff and could put it into practice, what about all those moms out there who actually don't know this stuff? Um, and so it really became my mission to help to teach mamas about my experiences, to teach them about my knowledge, to share my expertise in infant development, um, and specifically with children zero to three years. That's my like, oh, I love that age. Um, and maybe that will grow as my children grow, I'm not sure, but for now, I love the babies, even though my children are almost out of that three year range. Um, but this is my passion. And so I started running mom and baby classes that are focused on infant development. Those are babies at play classes. And I loved it. Oh, and I still love it. I just loved being there with the mamas and snuggling their babies and teaching them about what is normal for baby development and just being a source of comfort and support and compassion and caring. And we would you know, talk about our wonder moments and our challenges and all the mamas would, you know, come and share and give their experiences and really building that village, like for real, not on social media. <laughs> it's very different in Facebook groups, okay? But building that village amongst a group of mamas who came to know each other over the many weeks that we had our classes. So my classes are six week series and really building that rapport and that connection and finding their mama groups because that was something else like I found my mama group in Brooklyn with my first and then we moved and it was so hard to infiltrate <laughs> um, mama groups here in Toronto when I had a six month old and all of them had all kind of you know been together since their babies were newborns and they had six months of developing the relationship and it was just like me being the outsider so i didn't find a mama group for a very long time until i actually had my second um so that was kind of lonely also anyway so i don't really know what the point of this is i mean i do i wanted to share my story and my journey and why my passion for working with moms and babies developed and has evolved um and I really wanted to find a way to not only teach about infant development, but also I've now become certified as a sleep and well-being specialist. So I really help with responsive, attachment-focused, developmentally driven sleep support in a holistic way, not using any of these separation-based techniques that the you know sleep training culture and outdated sleep books have put into place. Um, and I see lots and lots of mamas thinking that their babies are not sleeping properly because they see the books and they see the other posts about how they're like, you know, eight month or they hear and see how their eight week old should be sleeping through the night, which is like not actually normal. Um, and so they often feel pressured into doing things like cry it out or, you know, all these other eat, play, sleep or eat, play, sleep. Um, and then you time the easy method. Oh my gosh. I, with my first, I had printed out so many sleep schedules. They were posted all over the walls in our apartment in New York and none of them said the same thing. They all had a different approach and I was driving myself crazy trying to figure out which one to follow and which one would help my baby to sleep. And let me tell you, none of them helped. Um, I will save that story for another day about my sleep and my baby's lack of sleep and how I got more sleep. But in terms of, um, 
yeah, just supporting mamas and helping to reduce the overwhelm of motherhood by being there as a sounding board, as an educator, as an expert in this infant development field. Just, yeah. You know what? The one thing I really want to impart on you guys today is that as soon as you let go and actually start trusting your mama instincts, you're going to know exactly what to do and what is best for your baby and your child. You're not going to be stressed out by what your doctor is telling you or what the other mom in the Facebook group is telling you or uh, the other mom in the mommy group whose baby seems to be progressing, you know, faster than yours. When you slow down enough and you start and you let go and you start to trust that you actually know your baby the best and you know what you're doing, mama, life is going to get much easier, much more enjoyable. And for sure, there's going to be ups and downs still. Like that's just part of babyhood and childhood and life in general. Um, but it's going to get easier. You'll be less stressed as a result. And so that's part of my role as well, is to empower you, to support you, to trust your mama instincts, and to trust your baby, and to know what's normal. So I'm going to leave you with that today, but happy Friday, and have a really wonderful weekend. We're going to see another house this weekend. Woo -woo. Um, so anyway... Much love, much love to all of you, and I just wanted to pop on and give you guys a little bit of inspiration and lots and lots of love. So I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.